Hello, VC community. Tony here, back with another segment, Tony's LPs are us. And as you can see from the title, this is my first review of the Rolling Stones Hackney Diamond LP. Uh, just got a copy from an indie record store. Uh, full disclosure, I ordered copies from Amazon because I thought I'd get them the next day that the album was released. And I get an email today or I check my emails for Amazon and Amazon's telling me that I'm not getting the record till the 30th, which uh, would be cool. But I want to do a review. I really wanted to hear it. I've heard most of the songs online. Saw a couple of uh, quick uh, reviews. Everyone seemed to like it. So I called up my local uh, record store. They had one copy. I said, please hold it for me. I have to go up that way. So uh, took a ride, picked it up. And it was cool because this is the indie copy for indie record stores only. And it's exclusive uh, clear vinyl. The ones I believe I'm getting from uh, Amazon are uh, purple vinyl. So there's so many variants, and that's that's one criticism I have, uh, is you know with the Rolling Stones right now, they've got so many different var variants, as they call them now, variants, and they're also, as you know, doing one for every baseball team, a cover for every baseball team in the Major League Baseball uh, league. So kind of bizarre. Uh, why did the Stones pick baseball? And it's not even baseball season. The Album came comes out in October. Baseball is only in the playoffs now and World Series later, but but whatever. So I'm sure uh, the the uh, real fanatical collector will have to get his teams, and that's cool. But you know the Rolling Stones are selling more records this way because I have a clear one now, and I'll have a purple one or or blue one or whatever it is. So, but uh, I'll give you my impressions. It's I I think it's great. I I, I like it a lot. Uh, here's the the album. As you, you know, everyone has has seen it. There's the back. The, these are uh, printed in Czechoslovakia, I believe. And here's the uh, gatefold, which I'll talk about. Uh, here's the hype sticker. If you could see that there, which I pulled. I just what I do is I slide the shrink right off. Slice it and slide it off. You can see the first album since five indie store exclusive clear, clear heavyweight vinyl. And I was lucky. Um, this vinyl is flawless. I cleaned it with my VPI, cleaned it, uh, used a static gun on it, and uh, there it is there. But no ticks. No pops, uh, very quiet, inner groove, quiet, uh, 33 and the third. As you can see, they used all the record. I don't know what it clocks in at. I was going to look that up, but you can look that up. Uh, just like a, a few of the other reviewers on online that I, that I, that I want on this record, um, I mean, you know, my whole life has been with the Stones uh, since since I could remember, it was Rolling Stones. Probably what hit me first, like everyone else, was the Satisfaction. That was the big hit, 64, 65, whatever. I remember hearing that. I was I was a young kid. But I went back and I bought virtually every Stone album that I could I get my hands on, multiple copies, imports, picture discs, uh, greatest hits, compilations, solo records. Got a few uh, Jagger solo have uh, Charlie Watts uh, solo on, on CD, his jazz solos. Bill Wyman's records are great. Uh, Ronnie Wood's records are great. Um, you know, so, and Keith records, you know, with uh, Steve Jordan on his, uh, the Winos uh, records that he did a few years back. And one was just reissued uh, Record Store Day, which I picked up. Uh, just to show you back to the record, here's the, they give you an insert. It's actually a, a a record sleeve, but they give you the record in a black polylined inner. So uh, this is this is all the credits, and they think about fifty people on here. What's interesting is, um, 
Andrew Watt, who's a producer, who's a young guy. I think Andrew Watt's 33, 34 years old. He's a young guy. He's a Grammy winner producer. He actually co-wrote with Jagger and, and Richards, Jagger and, and, um, and uh, Richards, Angry, Get Close, and Depending on You. So he gets credit. No other credit is given except the, they do uh, – Rolling Stone Blues, and Muddy Waters tune. Muddy Waters wrote that, obviously. But everything else is Keith and, and Mick. And uh, it's funny, there's not a Ron Wood, uh, you know, pen pen record on here at all. So here again, I'm not crazy about the cover. I'm not crazy about that there's no photos of the band at all. You know, I know they're uh, they're up there in age, but their time machine is 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 in, is in full swing because this music it, it could have been recorded, you know, 20 years ago, uh, 25 years ago. It's just they're they're just amazing uh, sound wise. You know, they're older now, but there's not one photo of them on on these records, and I don't know why they're not calling themselves the Rolling Stones anymore. This just says Rolling Stones, even on the side. The uh, it's a really nice jacket. You know, it's a single record. It's not a double record, like most records today, where they're stretched out. But it sounds good. I'm sure it's. You know, they have the best engineers. This album was was recorded all over the place. You get a chance when you do buy it to uh, to review where it was recorded. Obviously, they have a lot of guest stars. Uh, Lady Gaga, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, uh, Paul McCartney. I think that's the main, uh, you know, and uh, they got, they've got James King on horns. And uh, what's really interesting is Daryl Jones, who's been playing bass for the Stones since 1993 or so when Bill Wyman left, he is not on any of these records. As far as I know, he's not listed here. I did some research online, and there's nothing telling me why he's not on it. I did ascertain from the credits that uh, Ronnie Wood is playing bass on a lot of a lot of tracks, and so is Andy Watt, Andrew Watt, the producer. He's playing bass on a lot of tracks. But Daryl Jones, who is you know Stone's touring bass player, he's not an official member. They never come into the fold. There's the jacket again. But he is a, um, he's off the record. So we don't know if he'll tour with them again. Uh, I hope he does. He's, he really added a lot to the Stones. He didn't lose, they didn't lose a, they didn't lose a, a beat. Him and, him and uh, Charlie got along well. And uh, that's what I'm going to get into now. I'm going to get into, uh, obviously, Charlie Watts on two tracks that everyone knows. And Bill Wyman's on one track. And Charlie and Bill were on the same track. And also on that track, uh, they have Elton John playing piano with various synthesizers. There's a lot of synthesizers, a lot of piano on this record. And I didn't, I'm not going to go into who's playing what on, on those tracks. You can look it up. It's There's a lot here, as you can see. Um, these are credits, this whole area here. And... What they don't do is in the when the breakdown is they don't list any of the stones because the Rolling Stones are listed on the side. Mick Jagger, vocals, guitar, percussion, harmonica. Keith, guitar, vocals, bass, and piano. Ronnie Wood, guitar, bass, and backing vocals. So I don't know who played bass on what. I do know who played bass if it was Andrew Watt. But we don't know who played bass on those tracks that Andy Watt is not on. And I'm going to break that down. But overall, my uh, first impressions of this record on vinyl, blast it. The tubes were warmed up for two hours, cleaned the record, uh, de-staticed it, whatever that's called, with the gun. It's just a very well-recorded album. Instrumentations are all there. Uh, mix, mixed vocals are crystal clear. Uh, which brings me to the point of no lyric sheet, which I was hoping there was a lyric sheet. In here, a lot of Stones records in the past contain lyric sheets. There was no lyric sheet on Exile, but I did uh, look them up on uh, online back in the day, and 
and copied all the lyrics because those lyrics are great. Of course, this record is not Exile. You know, though Exile was a different, uh, a whole different vibe. As you know, it was just it, it, everybody was in in a, in a, in the right frame of mind, if you know what I mean. You know, now the guys are in their 80s, late 70s, and they can still rock. This is a very tight recorded album. Uh, this the sound is consistent from track to track, even though there were multiple engineers, multiple recording studios. Uh, the, the Charlie Watts drums, which were produced by uh, Don Don Was, I believe, they sound impeccable. They 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 fit right in. Everything meshes. Um, the vinyl is silent. The guitars are we, weaved uh, seamlessly. Um, but the one good, the one thing is, mixed vocals are crystal clear. You can understand every, you know, he just enunciates so well. It, it, it's it's really amazing. Like I said, these guys, you know, these Rolling Stones, they have a time machine because I don't know what keeps them young. I think, and I've always said this to a friend of mine, it's the young girlfriends that keep you young. Because, <laughs> you know. They have they they have the fa they found the fountain of youth because it's just amazing and they're pushing this record so hard they're on Fallon they're on CBS Good Morning they're all over the internet they just did a live uh, mini show or concert in New York City which was a um, you know which like uh, a secret show they did they just you know people who knew knew. And Lady Gaga came on board, and that's all online. It's on YouTube. It's they're incredible. They could still play. They could still drive. They're still tight. The record, this record, I, I believe, is is one of their best records. It's consistent. Of you know, like I said, of course, they're you know they're they're twenty years older than their last record. The last record, it, it's just it's amazing. I wish they would do more uh, live, you know, more new stuff. You know, we know they have probably volumes of records that they could put out from outtakes and things like that. But this is cool because it's all new. Uh, it's just a uh, well-recorded record. It's well balanced, and like I like I like I said, the uh, the vocals are great. And for me, being a Stones fan my whole life, this this they all have their signatures, signature uh, Stone tone on it it's they do a, uh, a ballad they'll do a rocker they even even get into a little bit of punk they have a, a country twang i guess ronnie's playing slide um keith is in, in keith is rocking out vo uh, guitar licks like you won't believe the tones are so good on this album it's just uh, really cool so uh for the first track which is on side one that's angry that was the first single release we've we all love that. We've heard it. Very lush recording. It's a driving beat. And on, on that record, we, uh, uh, Andrew, uh, Ronnie Wood or Keith is playing bass because Ron, because Watt is not listed as the bass player. Jordan's playing drums. The rest of the band is, they're not listed in the credits because Mick's there, uh, Keith's there, and Ronnie's there. So you know they're in that. Close to you is Andy Watt on bass, Elton John on piano, and Jordan on drums. And there's a really cool uh, break at the at the mid mid into the song, like a nice percussion break, almost like a Santana Latin thing that we that we know the Stones uh, used to like to do with uh, percussion. And I don't know who's playing percussion. It could be Mick doing some things or whatever. And we have on horn, which is a great sax solo, which was which was is James King. I don't know much about James King. I didn't go into detail because all you Stones people know. You you know we looked that stuff up today in a matter of seconds online. I just gave it a, a listen. I've heard, like I said, I've listening to the tracks um, during the week. Listening to them outside. I've been busy this week, but while I'm in between, I would I would go on YouTube and hear once the album was released, and I couldn't get it. I was listening to it on YouTube. Uh, today I was all over the place. I'm doing this uh, late tonight because I just got a chance to to listen to the record. Uh, the next track on one on side A or one is "Depending on You." 
has a country twang to it, a lot of acoustics. It has a string arrangement, which is beautiful. I think it's the only record on the on the album that has uh, strings. Again, we have uh, Andy Watt on bass, Jordan on drums, and um, you know Jagger is right in the middle with this tight band. And I believe from what I from what I read and what I've heard. Most of this album was recorded live. These guys were in the room, you know, together, uh, if possible, if alive. They were in the room. We know Charlie was taped, and that was mixed in. But this was incredible. Um, not one note is out of place. There's not one. It's There's no wasted records. There's no wasted space. You're going to say to yourself, you know, everything is, everything lined up. And, because it's the Stones and they sound like the Stones, they don't try to sound like somebody else. It it all sounds familiar, which is really cool. So, um, the the next thing on A is "Bite My Head Off," and of course that's with Sir Paul McCartney and uh, Jordan's on drums. Paul is on fire on this record. He is going a hundred miles an hour playing bass and even. People have talked about this. Mick says, play it, Paul. And Paul is on this type of fuzzy, distorted bass. Not too distorted, but just unbelievable. And then a solo comes in. I guess it's Keith. Just an incredible solo. So hats off to Paul for getting into this and, and playing it like he was, uh, you know, 22 years old. You know, Paul's up there in age with, uh, with Mick and Keith, you know. So next track is Whole Wide World which I would say it's a little, uh, has like a punk feel to it, like 80s punk. And of course we have uh, Jordan again on drums and Watt on bass, Andy Watt. And the rest of the band is the band, the Stones. There's some organ and synthesizer and stuff. Then we have Dreamy Skies, which is really cool, really country. And I, I guess that's, there's some slide in there. So I guess that's Ronnie Wood, because he mentioned on uh, Jimmy Fallon, that he's playing some slide. And when you mention a ham radio and Hank Williams in the same song, that's country. Okay, so that's country. I wish there was a lyric sheet again, but there's no lyric sheet. We also hear for the first time um, Mick playing harp, Mick playing the acoustic harmonica, which is which is tremendous. Um, you know, Mick is, is ageless. When I watched those clips with Lady Gaga from the New York concert the other night, you know, he's jumping around like jumping Jack Flash and they're all they're posing, they're doing all their all their things that they always did. Um, now we're on side two, that's the end of side one. Side two starts off with Charlie on drums, and that's called Mess It Up. And um guitar and bass are by Andrew Watt. He plays guitar on this record as well. And I, I guess Ronnie and Keith also play record on this. But Charlie's right there, and you can hear the difference. You can hear Charlie. You know, Charlie's got that beat, and he does a few fills in between where Jordan doesn't. Jordan wouldn't do that. Um, so it's Charlie all the way. The next song, Living by the Sword, is Elton John on piano, but then you got Charlie and Bill together so bill's playing bass and that bass pops he's jumping i could just picture him with that long bass hanging low and charlie's back there keeping them keeping the boys on the track down the highway going right down living by the sword and elton john's on piano which is cool elton john i believe doesn't sing you know maybe he's doing back backup vocals but I don't know. Like I said, you could look all this stuff up. And I, and I can't uh, reiterate as much that this is a real Stones album. And uh, before I forget, uh, thanks for watching again. And thanks for all this, uh, the subs. And if you please like and subscribe if you haven't, haven't done so. It really, really helps us out. Um, next song is the typical Keith song. That Keith does one solo per record. And that's uh, Tell Me Straight. Is a great typical Keith, you, you know, and he's clear as a bell. 
The solos are clear as a bell. Keith is clear as a bell. And I believe on this, it's actually uh, Jordan. Maybe it's um, one of them on bass. Maybe Ronnie's on bass. Next song, of course, is the, the second single, which is Sweet Sounds with Lady Gaga and uh, Stevie Wonder, the wonder of it all, the ninth wonder of the world. Stevie Wonder, plenty of piano. There we have Andy Watt on bass and Jordan on drums again. And that song kicks, kicks ass. That's a great song. It's been all over the radio, all over YouTube, you know. And what's cool about the Stones is if you go on YouTube, you can hear this whole record for free. You just put it, you know, the Stones put it out there. They didn't say, we're not going to put it, we're going to limit it. You got to buy it on Spotify or stream. They put it out there. So I give them credit for that. You know, if anybody to do it, that's, that's, that's cool that they're able to do that, you know. Then we come to the end, which is my one of my which is my favorite track, because I believe it's just the Stones. I believe it's just Keith, Mick, and Ronnie Wood, and that's uh, the Rolling Stone Muddy Waters song, the Muddy Waters tune, which is a um, Rolling Stone blues. It's like Catfish Blues, Rolling Stone blues. It's all Muddy Waters. It's a, a conglomerate of all his stuff. That's you can't beat Muddy Waters. So they end it with Muddy Waters, the Muddy Water Blues, and it's just the Stones, just the three of them, I believe. Um, there's there's no credit on it. It just has uh, the recording engineer are assisted by, and it just says Rolling Stone Blues. So, And again, I'm not a big fan of the, uh, the art. It's cool, Hackney Diamonds. You know, the Stones named it right because it is a diamond. It's not, you know, whatever they did, they crushed that stone hard enough to make it a diamond after, you know, 60 years or whatever they've been rocking out. So they they, they did it really good. I, I know I'm forgetting something I wanted to talk about. I got some notes, but, you know, that's just my review. It's just a great album. Very lush, very consistent. It's like slipping into an old pair of sneakers, old pair of jeans. You can just sit back and, and relax. Um, just a really cool record. And I, I didn't listen to it with headphones on. Like, I'm going to start listening to things with headphones. Like, I talked about uh, the Redux, Redo, A Dark Side of the Moon. I listened to that open air, and I listened to it with my headphones. And, you, of course, you, you're going to pick up something else. So I want to hear that guitar play because the guitars uh keith and ron or or watt whoever's playing they just seamlessly weave these guitars the engineers on this record are just great and it was pressed i believe in the, in the czech republic it's a flawless pressing um i just wish there was a lyric sheet and i really wish that they would call them the rolling stones instead of rolling stones like, I, like I'll show you. Rolling Stones. Rolling Stones. Produced by Andrew Watt. And, uh, and it's interesting. The only one who gets credit on the back, as far as a guest, is uh, the one-of-a-kind Lady Gaga. So that just shows you the clout that Lady Gaga has in this world of, of recording, you know, Sir Paul's not listed on the back. You know, Stevie Wonder's not listed on the back. Now, come on. You know, Lady Gaga's huge, but relatively a baby compared to uh, Sir Paul, Stevie Wonder, Elton John, um, you know, whoever else is, uh, you know, Bill Wyman, you know, not, no mention, Lady Gaga, I guess she has a good agent. That must have been the deal. Lady Gaga goes in there with the Stones. And again, it's kind of strange that Andrew Watt is actually writing with with um, Mick and Keith uh, at, at this time at this for this record. So this is going to be interesting to see if they tour uh, these, these songs because I saw them at the la their last tour a few years ago at, uh, at the Meadowlands in uh, New Jersey. 
Giant Stadium, Jet Stadium. Just one of the best concerts I've ever seen. I saw them a few times. I must have saw them three times. Uh, once in Philly when the during the Start Me Up uh, era. And before that, I saw them at the Garden in the uh, mid-'70s, I guess. I, I was young. And uh, I remember I took a camera. You know, I took a camera in there. And you know, I, I went after I developed the camera, they were like you know, this size. Uh, I also have pictures for, like that with The Who and Selena Palmer. But, but they were this size. I'm not sure where those are. They were, I used to put everything on slides to, to uh, you know, to show on, on a screen and stuff. But uh, that's my review. Just a great record. My hat's off to the Stones. They, they've hit it out of the park. And like I said before, uh, they must have a time machine because they don't, do not sound uh, their age. You know, Waters has has sound sounds a little bit older tony bennett when he he sounded older tom jones sounds older uh, who else uh, sinatra when he was doing it up sound older dion sounds different than he did before but keith has some type of this elastic voice it's the high and i think when you see him live with Lady Gaga, he's trying to keep up with Lady Gaga's voice. So he, he's he's so competitive. He pushes himself with the if the other team is good, he's gonna be better. And they really I think they're really proud of this record because they're they're all over the place with it. Again, I just wish that there was photos of the band or some out to, uh, some like candid shots of them recording, which would have been cool. Maybe some shots of, of of everyone who was on this record. You know, like remember the old records? You you take a Clapton record out. There was a collage of everyone on the record. You do a Steely Dan record. There's a collage of a lot of the guests that were on it. Steve Miller. You know, it's 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 endless. Um, uh, the Phil the the Phil Collins record that. They just issued on uh, from the Atlantic, from uh, Analog Productions. That record inside, there's a collage of of people who participated on that record. Even John Lennon had that. John Lennon did that when he was played with his various people and stuff. So that's just my criticism. It has nothing to do with the music. It's just a packaging criticism. Everybody wants everybody wants to have it all. Um, you know, today we go on the internet, we could see all these, but it would be nice to have it in a package. And uh, once again, I'm going to show you uh, what I did with the hype sticker. I just slid it down. I keep it on the inner sleeve. You see, this is a polyline sleeve. And um, that's, the, that's it right there. And I forgot to show you, I think, the actual, like, maybe I did, but the actual clear vinyl, I think I did, so both sides. And you could see me right there. I could see you. So um, thanks a lot. Keep rocking. Please like and subscribe. And I'm going to shut this down if I can. And uh, we'll keep on contributing to uh, the BC community. Uh, please send your comments. I want to hear what you think about the record. And if there's any questions or anything that I missed, because I miss a lot when, like I said, these aren't scripted in a way, but you know, just in a nutshell, I give this record overall a 10 sound wise, pressing wise performance. They're really into it. Um, so thanks a lot. Keep rocking and we'll see you soon. Ciao.